So I just Googled Google Analytics and it dumped me off. Uh, the top search result took me to right here. I'm gonna click sign in to analytics and voila. So it just has whatever site it is on, brand new site, just hooked up, just built this site or rebuilt that site. But we're gonna come down here to admin is where you're gonna wanna go and we're gonna create a new account. So we're working on ECM lawns, so I'll call it ECM lawns, and I'll go to next. Since this is a website, I'll leave it on web, and I'll call it ECM lawns again. Our website's secure, so I'll change this to HTTPS, and the domain is ecmlawns.com. Category is gonna be home and garden for a lawn care and landscaping company and they are in the Eastern time zone. So we'll go GTM minus five New York time and we'll click create. So we need to sign off on this stuff right here for Google and click accept and voila. So all you need to do to hook up Google Analytics is slap this code snippet they provide you right here into the, the head tags, it tells you right here, into the head tags of your website. Um, so I build Divi websites, so if you have a Divi website, I would highly recommend Divi if uh, you're looking for a website builder, and we're gonna slap it in right here. So uh, this is gonna be ECM Lawns, and all this is is a, um, comment right here. So if you notice, it is all commented out and now this has the nice code uh, coloring to it. So I'm going to take out my spaces just to clean my code up a little bit. But these comments are uh, highly recommended. So when you're looking at your code, you can quickly and easily like realize what that code snippet is without trying to actually look at the code and stuff like this. Like this one's easy enough. Like I would know this is a Google Analytics code snippet. But when you have a bunch in here, it gets really confusing. So these comments, uh, all code languages, I believe, have a way to comment. It's not always this uh, doing it like that, but that's how you do it in, I guess this is JavaScript, um, HTML, I don't know, something like that. So that's that. All I gotta do is click save. So if you do have a WordPress site and you're not running Divi, you may need to come uh, to the website, like however you get to theme customizer. Uh, a lot of times in theme customizer, there is a place to put the code snippet. Um, so yeah, this, this one doesn't, but I have seen other themes that you can put the code snippet uh, in theme customizer. So uh, with Divi, it just has this place, it makes it really quick and easy to slap anything in any of these locations on your site. And we just did that, and I believe I clicked save, but I'll just click save again, just in case. So that's that. That, that was literally it for it. We, we've hooked up Google Analytics. Like That's how easy it really is. But we wanna go down here to uh, data collection and turn on remarketing and click save. Um, and then I just run through them all and make sure, I, mean, I, I know a lot of these don't need to do a lot of these. Yeah, there, that's it. So that's gonna be it. Uh, we're gonna come into here and hook up Google Search Console. And I would, so Google Search Console, we're gonna hook this up, but you hook up Google Analytics first because after you hook up Google Analytics uh, first, then you can verify your Search Console properties via the Analytics tag. And it just makes it a lot quicker and easier and you don't have to slap another line of code on your site, the less code your site has, the better in most cases. Um, and then I'd highly recommend like hooking up Google ads also, but I, I really wouldn't do that until you're ready to like run some Google ads because you can get free ad spend money. So I would wait till you're ready to run some ads before you like set up your ads account and then connect to Google Analytics because then that way you can, can utilize that free ad spend. But we'll just go back right here and that's that. So if you wanted to add, like I'll need to add this client um, to this. So I would go to user management and add them. If we wanted to set up a filter, for example, I could set up like a filter for um, 
like my IP address, for example, if I don't want like every time I go to the website to count as a website hit, a visitor, a user, a session, anything like that, like I could filter out my IP address. So there's, there's way more stuff you can do in here and you can set up goals, which if, if you're really trying to dive into your analytics, I would highly recommend setting up goals and stuff like that. But like this, these videos are more for beginners. Like let's get, <laughs> let's get, you know, the basics under control before we worry about setting up goals in our Google analytics and stuff like that. So that was honestly it guys. Um, the <laughs> analytics is set up for this, this, uh, website, this business, and there's going to be nothing here. Well, there, there's one active user right now because I'm on the website. So we can already tell that it's working, data's flowing, stuff like that. So we're good to go. Um, yeah, so the only thing would be here would be I'll need to come back in here and make sure that my client has access to this. I can't believe that's my Gmail, but whatever. But it's uh, as easy as adding an email address. So obviously you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't make a typo on that email address. <laughs> Uh, but it's that easy and you can decide what kind of permission they get So obviously I'll give my client like the permission where they could actually kick me off the account if they wanted because uh, At the end of the day, it's theirs not uh, not mine So that's as easy as it is to set up Google Analytics. I'd highly recommend uh, Sticking around for the next video, which is going to be Google Search Console We're actually going to circle back to Google Analytics so we can connect Search Console to um, analytics. So that's step one. Um, in Google Analytics, you're going to have a lot of insightful data over here. I like to like quickly reference like uh, acquisition and just like even if you just go to the overview, once you have data flowing in here, you can see where um, the visitors and stuff are coming. So let me go to a website that gets a lot of traffic that we manage and I'll show you this. So this is for the past week, uh, you know, 87 people have found our client's website organically because we do their SEO. <laughs> That's how we roll. Um, this is, this is a, bigger, a bigger website right here. Uh, they have a lot of content on their website, so that made it very easy for me to get them a lot of results because you have to have content. I see this, run into this a lot with a lot of clients. Like they're just like, I don't know what to put on the pages or this or that. Like you gotta have content. The web is too vast for you to have a little baby website with hardly any content on it and expect anything to happen. So I've been saying for a long time, like you really need to start blogging. I understand that you know you may not be a writer of this or that, but you need to spit out at least 500 words, preferably like 1500 words, throw in some pictures and make a blog post out of it. Just content related to what you do, the people you serve, uh, the, the services you offer, your area, your products, why, helpful tips, lists, uh, comparisons, uh, what, whatever kind of content you can come up with that you think people that would, you know, you want on your website would like to, to see, like get that content on your website. And I always like to say, like, don't do it for like people just assume no one's ever going to read it, but the, the search engines will pick up on that and you know, you'll benefit from it greatly. So that's a real quick thing. You can come down here into like behavior and see how people actually like flow throughout your uh, pages and stuff like this. Uh, so it's really, really cool. You can see like how they flow from page to page to page through a website and where they drop off and all this kind of stuff. So, and then if you set up goals then you'd have conversions in here and stuff like this. So it's just a really good idea to grab all this. You start getting demographic data and all different kinds of stuff. Um, and this, this will really help you out when if you're running ads or if you're trying to figure out what the next piece of content you should make is stuff like that. You can find out what your popular pages are, where people are dropping off. You can figure, you can tweak the, the layout. You can tweak your content, tweak your headlines, tweak your images. You can make all kinds of educated decisions based off the data that analytics provides you for absolutely free. And you just saw how easy it was to hook up. So there's no reason that you should not have Google Analytics hooked up. And that's how you do it. 
So next, we're on to Google Search Console, which is uh, very, very similar to Google Analytics, uh, but you actually get what I think more insightful data from uh, Google Search Console. So let's, uh, let's wrap this one up and we'll get into Search Console, hook that up and get this client uh, headed towards success in 2020. So if you liked the video, please remember to like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. If you have a comment, question, leave it down there. I will answer it. And until the next video, you already know, keep making money.